welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my beautiful brothers and sisters of light and magic and all things inspiring. Um, my name is Louisa and I have been making uh, videos on my YouTube channel now for about a year. And I'm really called at the moment to share what I know because what I know is empowering and what I know is um, not only hopeful, that word to me is a little bit wishy-washy to just hope for something. This is it. We are changing rapidly. We are changing inside, outside, every which way you can imagine. Um, the collective consciousness of humanity is undergoing an unprecedented shift. So for some of us, that's looking like a really tough time. And I know that the virus and all the effects that that's having can be um, very much in the forefront of your mind. For those of us who maybe have been aware that this was coming and have been prepared for it and training for it uh, in a spiritual sense um, and also armed with knowledge, for us it's weirdly, it's going to sound a bit weird, but we're very excited. We're excited because we knew that this had to happen and we also can see um, many, many signs that it's going in the right direction. So um, I'm speaking potentially to an audience where there's a huge difference or range of understanding about what is planetary ascension, what is the shift. So I'm not going to talk about it too much, but just for people who've never heard of that before, um, I just want to share a very quick kind of snapshot that our planet Gaia, our planet Earth, has been in what's called the third density experience now for many, many thousands of years, like hundreds of thousands of years, possibly longer. Um, and this experience has been a, a very time-bound, linear, dense experience. And in many ways, it's been a very difficult experience, a very traumatic experience for people. There's been a lot of suffering on this planet. There's been a lot going on that would blow your mind if you know nothing about it, um, including that um, the human race has um, been manipulated and controlled in many ways and this stuff is now starting to come to light um, in the alternative media of our planet so you have to look a lot further than mainstream mainstream media are, is extremely narrow bandwidth of truth and even now within that bandwidth the truth itself is disintegrating they are showing their true colors about how much they're censoring knowledge, the knowledge flow on this planet. So really, the mainstream media is going to be doing pretty much nothing but instilling fear and hyping up this situation to make us all panic. So the alternative community, the spiritual community, we're doing everything we can by putting out information to, um, to quell fear. And it's not unfounded. We have really good reasons why we don't want people to be afraid, why this is a time of great hope. So um, yeah, hopefully you can uh, listen to some of my other content to get a bit more information about this. Um, I made another video recently called Mass, Awa Mass Psychosis Mass Awakenings 2020, which talks a bit more generally about what's going on with the awakening and it has a lot of links that you can follow. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to talk about our ascension, what that is, and our power within that as individuals. I want to really um, put out a call to the army of light that is currently on this planet. And if you're watching this video, then there's every chance you're one of this army of light. So as I said before, we, we've had an earth in a third dimensional experience, a very dense experience, and we're shifting now. We're shifting into, um, we're shifting through the fourth dimension, which we've also been experiencing on this planet for a while, into what's known as the fifth dimension consciousness, which is kind of pretty much a paradise compared to where we've been. Um, fifth dimensional consciousness, uh, the, the dark things that happen on this planet cannot exist in that level of consciousness. It's a consciousness that um, automatically imbibes unity and harmony and collaboration and compassion and forgiveness and love and wisdom and power and creativity and all the juicy beautiful things in life that humans want in their hearts but have really struggled to achieve on this planet up till now. 
So our ascension process as a planetary body and the beings that inhabit this planetary body has been underway for many years now, really. The 1945 was kind of the starting point when, um, if you recall, we had the Hiroshima incident. There was a call out put out to our um, galactic family and the angelic realm and um, our higher selves, a call out from humanity to help. And in 1945, in came the first wave of volunteers. Um, I might put some links below so you can kind of follow some of the main thinkers on the waves of volunteers, including including Dolores Cannon. Um, but in 1945, that's when that's when the first wave of volunteers was born on the earth to begin to raise the consciousness. And I myself would classify myself as a second wave volunteer. I was born in 1974 and I am um, following in the footsteps of those uh, knowledge builders and um, light workers really that came before me. Um, and now we're getting a third wave which will be the children that are born at this time will come in and, and step up and assist. We're all really, really important. Um, so, so, and we, we're here to do a job. We're here to raise the consciousness of frequency of this planet. Um, that's why I call us an army of light. There are millions of us on the planet. The biggest estimation I've heard is that there's 4.5 billion star seeds. This is another term that you might hear for us. People that have incarnated here, who's, who would say that their main home, if you like, would be in, in another planetary system. Um, it's very complex it isn't like you're just from one planet and that's your heritage and that's where you come from we're, we've actually all got histories intertwined all over the place and um in it's a quantum world out there so many of these beings that we're interacting with are actually future selves or higher selves um or mm, higher dimensional expressions of our self down here on planet earth right so um so it's, it's a complicated picture up there. Um, but nevertheless, we've come in to, to work with the light. We've come in to infuse this planet with new ideas, with um, higher frequencies of emotion and higher virtues and higher actions. Now, there are so many ways we can do this. Um, and we've probably, everyone on this video that might be watching this has probably already been doing a lot of this work. One of the primary ways has actually been to heal our own trauma. So for those of you who've been having a really tough time for the last decade or so, or even a couple of years, um, there's really good reason for that. You've been clearing and purging a lot of the emotional gunk that has got backlogged in the human consciousness. Um, it clears when it clears for you, you heal your trauma, you heal the trauma down through your family line. You clear out that, it's like clearing out a pipe, right? An ancestral pipe. You clear it all down that timeline. Um, so the work is like heroic. And ironically, up until very recently, I think the, um, the star seeds and light workers on the planet were quite often the outcasts, the ones that were laughed at, ridiculed, um, had to go through a lot of suffering and were very invalidated and um, yeah, felt, you know, um, unvindicated, I suppose, for their points of view. So things are rapidly changing now and all of a sudden it's us who are needed more than ever. So if we've been working on our own shadow, if you have a high enough consciousness that you actually can self-reflect and can create this emotional alchemy, which has been so much a part of a personal awakening that we've each been going through, then you are now ready to step into the role of light keeper, light worker for the rest of the planet at this time. So this energy field that you've been working so hard to create and all of the things that you've learned, my beautiful, magical sisters, especially I'm speaking to you because I know a lot of beautiful sisters who have talents in all sorts of ways, working with herbs and magical plants, medicine plants, um, women who can sing light language to bring down those highest frequencies from the other dimensions, from the higher dimensions. Um, healers who know how to work with energy and can feel that on another person and correct those imbalances just through the exchange of energy fields. Um, crystal workers and grid workers and um, earth shamans and 
galactic star beings and earth sentinels, guardians, warriors. You guys know who you are. And now, now our job actually starts. This is what we came to do. We came to be here to hold this light, to spread this light through the power of our consciousness, right? So a lot of our work has been an internal journey so far. Now it becomes an external journey. We mirror the beautiful self, the beautiful being that we've become in our hearts. We mirror that out to, to the world at a time when the world absolutely needs this. Now, this crisis has created a what was beautifully described by April, Elizabeth April. I'll also put her link below. She's a... Um, a psychic channeler for the Galactic Federation of Light that is one of the groups of beings or the overseeing council that is helping us right now on planet Earth. Um, she talked about, or she was given this information from the Galactic Federation, that the, the matrix, right? The matrix is our shared sense of reality, what the kind of codes that create our shared consensual reality. That, of course, is disintegrating right now. We have belief systems tumbling okay so what's happened is it's created a kind of a static chaos in the in, in the matrix field it used to be clear and stable now it's static so all of a sudden people who were holding light and love essentially in whatever way they were doing that have an unprecedented opportunity to penetrate the field with that love to basically it's almost like putting in an interference into that old pattern so that we, we want to infuse it with as much light and love as we possibly can. That's our job right now. Because we're working with a collective energy field. And for those of you who are already magicians, who already understand what I'm talking about, you will know what I mean by the working with the energy field, working with the power. We have a lot of tools, right? And, and many of us are like masters at one or just learning in another or we have talents, right? So for me, my, one of my gifts is, is through vision. I can, um, I can receive a lot of information, downloads, um, energy, codes from source through vision. I can see things. I get metaphors put in front of me, analogies. Um, and that's how I work. And I also get a lot of oral messages. I get voices um, coming through. Uh, in you know just bam a sentence like the other day I was um, just washing the dishes you know you'll get these things in the most banal moments I'm washing the dishes and I was kind of praying I suppose I was speaking to spirit and I was saying bring in the light and spirit said straight away back you are the light and I love that it was so beautiful it's oh thank you that's right I am the light we are the light we are the light this is what we came here to do was be the light and spread it, spread it, spread it. So, so yeah, so I get visions and I get messages and my way of spreading the light is this way, right? I love to teach. I love to share. I'm a good communicator. I'm a Gemini. Um, my sign is Mercury. My planet is Mercury, the planet of communication. So I write and I teach and I do videos and um, yeah, and I do some counseling as well, talking kind of therapy. For other people, your ways of spreading light might be to make songs, make music, oh my goodness. Send that magic, beautiful sound out into the world right now. Grab your drum, your medicine drum. I've got this beautiful, beautiful drum here that I made and I can't play right now because he, he doesn't like the rain and there's a lot of rain. Make your sound, make your sound sing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one way of bringing the light into the world. Um, commune with nature. Um, I have one friend who is really good with um, wild crafting and using natural herbs that are from our, you know, from our wildernesses and, and her garden to make tonics and um, healing things that people can drink to help their immunity so she's handing them out so this is another way of spreading light um, 
maybe it's a creative project that you're doing at home um, or, or conversely you might be out there you know acts of kindness right now every single act of kindness is another out there into the energy field it's, an, it's like shooting a dart of light that explodes when it hits the collective energy field so you know just be nice to that person that's freaking out in the supermarket I know it's really stressful out there at the moment I know it's easy to get triggered you know I had one lady running up to me the other day she was looking for directions and she was a bit lost but she sort of ran up to me in a panic and was like stay away stay away you know and I wasn't gonna go any closer than 1.5 meters because I respect that you know people are trying to follow health authorities and that kind of thing um, but she was so panicked so um, but I could calm her down just with my presence just I gave her a big smile I opened my arms not for a hug just open my arms and I said it's all good it's just up there gave her the directions you know calm down calm down that's what my energy field was saying to her um, so I've been doing this a lot I've been smiling at people in the streets I've been just you know sending my neighbors emails do you guys need anything I know you're already doing these things because you're all beautiful people right just do more of it I want you to understand how important it is right now um, it's this is just critical every single every single choice we make is so important um, and another so that's kind of external world stuff um, and I'm called to do a lot of that at the moment I'm really really busy but I'm also mindful that I need to be meditating at least twice a day. This is my spirit guidance. I need to be drinking a, a big cup of water every hour, lots and lots of water. There's major upgrades going on in our systems at the moment. Our planet has been bombarded with gamma rays. Um, if you guys follow the Schumann resonance, you'll, you'll know about how it's been gradually going up and up and up these last couple of years. It's hitting unprecedented levels right now. So we have enormous amounts of photonic light that's coming in. Um, that is you know upgrading our DNA it's um, bringing online our psychic abilities our telepathy um, our dreaming our ability to contact these higher beings or um, yeah whatever whatever magic you're doing so <laughs> will be enhanced right now so um, so work with that and what was I gonna say yes so I'm being called to do a lot of outside stuff but I'm being reminded by spirit to rest as well, really taking care of myself. Um, I'm being quite, I'm being quite indulgent. Like I'm, you know, putting. I bought some rose essential oil the other day. It's super expensive. A little bit in the bath. Have a nice bath. Um, lots of yoga. Lots of music. Lots of nice food. Just taking care of my being, knowing that my emotional frequency and my emotional state right now is so important to keep it up and happy because again I'm sending that out into the collective field whatever I'm experiencing is going out there so yeah so if I feel a little triggered or a little bit wobbly I'm just taking a step back um, yeah so a third or another thing that's super important is for us to to if you haven't already done this start trying and see how you go so collecting sorry connecting into our collective shared consciousness now humanity has always had this in the fifth dimension it's it's a that's what you get when you go in the fifth, the fifth dimension we have telepathic ability we can connect as a one mind and um, I hadn't actually heard this and yet until quite recently but I had already been having these experiences where I could literally sense this collective shared mind that was already existing in the fifth dimension so those beings who had elevated their consciousness to that level are there I can speak to them and it's not like a conversation is in third dimension it's um, telepathic thought isn't slow it's kind of instant you know what the person means and what the message is and the, the words are not so important it's more the message so you might not get any word it's hard to explain you don't get any words you just get the message you just get the download <laughs> um, so I've had some experiences with this before but more recently I decided to um, I decided to to just do it one day a couple of days ago 
um, checking in to see if I could sense the collective consciousness of humanity. And I had a, a really powerful experience with it. I, I just shut my eyes and I, and I asked to, to be connected to it, to connect, connect me to the collective consciousness of humanity. And as I said before, um, I get things in vision. So what came to me when I thought that is I could literally see across the planet. I could see people all over the planet. And I could, it was like I was flying over the top of them on a dragon, mind you. <laughs> Why not have some fun? <laughs> so I'm flying over them on my dragon and I'm looking down and I can see all these people and I can kind of zoom in to see each of them, like an individual, what, what they're doing. And so I was doing this with a few people and I saw a lot of suffering. You know, this was a couple of days ago now. I saw people um, curled up on their beds crying. And I saw people frightened, running, scurrying in the streets, frightened. Um, so I, I just sort of picked up a few of these impressions and then I got an aggregate emotion from the collective field and that emotion two days ago was the only word I could use for it was help uh, that they were asking for help there isn't really one word they were asking for help that was the feeling that I was getting a cry for help so that's interesting that's that tells me a lot about okay I have been in my life in times of deep deep need of help there was a moment many years ago now in around 2000 when i had been struggling with a string of addictions I, I couldn't solve it myself i was trying to stop drinking alcohol at that time and finally that's right i was trying to i was trying to get through 14 days without a drink and I'd done it already three, two or three times and kept failing. And one night, I was, I was on the 13th day, I remember that. And for some reason I snapped again and I'd gone up to the bottle shop and I bought myself a bottle of red wine, I came back to the house and I drank half of it and I felt terrible. And that was it, I, something broke in me and I snapped and I, I remember literally sobbing on the floor, sobbing with utter utter desperation and surrender help right. that's where I was that was the feeling that I was getting from this collective humanity was just this cry for help and um, it what what's so interesting about the story and why I bring it up is that the next I went to bed after that the next day I woke up in a state of enlightenment nirvana like a state of absolute bliss um it's one of those stories of you know sudden boom <laughs> i'm there <laughs> oh this is what it's all about this is what they this is what the monks talk about and the yogis talk about and this is what god is i was i was in a state of love complete love with everything with myself with the world everything looked amazing and beautiful and I, I wasn't religious at all at that time, but I remember thinking, oh, this is a state of consciousness. And this is what's meant by the word God. It's a state of consciousness. And since then, I've come to kind of think of it as source or the quantum energy field, the intelligent energy field. Um, that experience lasted about three months. So it was very abiding and life changing. And then it kind of petered off and I had to go and do hard work like everybody else, <laughs> meditate and <laughs> take care of myself. Um, it also completely changed my life because I gave up alcohol, I, I cleaned everything up. It was a game changer. Um, so I'm using that personal experience to illustrate the power of this surrender and the power of this cry for help that is coming from humanity right now. And it's an opportunity not for governments or controlling agendas to step in and go oh we can help you by controlling you more or 
shooting poisonous vaccines into your arms or putting a martial law in place. This is what they want. This is the timeline they want. This is not the help that humanity really needs. The help that humanity needs is liberation. And that, liberation, light and love, the L words, right? Now, we can help. For anyone who's listening to this that feels stable enough and in touch with themselves enough and can stay grounded enough and can stay in love and kindness, you are the help. You are the army of light. This is the help. So our fellow human beings are crying for help. We can help. We can help in our homes meditating. <laughs> that is very powerful help. And when we meditate and we, we create bliss within our hearts and we send that bliss out or we, collect, we connect to our collective consciousness and we share um, a unified energy field in those higher dimensions, that is help. When we take, you know, ease someone's fears and concerns. The nice thing, we don't even have to explain all of this stuff to people. We don't, people don't even need to really know. I think they will eventually know what's been going on on this planet and they'll eventually understand ascension and this paradigm shift. But for the moment, the main thing is that people stay in their hearts. That's the critical thing, that they get out of the fear and they go into love. Um, that is, you, people are making a choice just by doing that. They don't have to understand the big picture because the big picture is almost, un, it's not understandable. It's too complex for any one person. I've got a kind of my own grasp and explanatory framework that I'm working off, but I'm really mindful that it's, it's mine. It's a construct. There are 7 billion versions of reality on this planet Earth right now. But I will tell you that there are not 7 billion versions of love Love is pure at its essence. We all have that. We can all connect through that. That's what unifies us, not the mental plane, not the ideas, not the way we explain things. We can communicate that way, but what we really, our biggest power lies in our heart and what's emanating from our hearts. So, yeah, so we are the army of light. And I just wanted to invite you all to take up the challenge to be that light warrior right now. Um, it's not about fighting because that, that word war, all those sorts of things, even the word army is a little bit risky to use. It's not about polarity. It's not about evil and good, um, winning or losing. It's actually about rising above that and integrating, right? Um, so having forgiveness and compassion, even for those beings on earth that have done these terrible atrocious things. We, we want them to awaken as well. We want everybody to awaken because if everyone awakens, they will be in love and we will be in a harmonious place. And this whole messy story of humanity's past will be forgiven, for um, exonerated, atoned. Hmm. <laughs> Be that power, be that light, be that love. You are light, you are love.